For whatever reason, I have decided to start recording now about two interesting asteroids and also about my research. Um, so astrological research has come a long way. Uh, the idea that you can actually take a bunch of charts, collect a bunch of articles about the people whose birth charts you have, and then just do text frequency analysis on it allows you to see patterns with um, statistical significance. And you can run all these tests. And that's actually the short version of what I've been doing in mass. So for the past uh, about a year, and it's probably going to go on for two years, uh, I've been running these simulations on asteroids and Wikipedia articles and Astro Data Bank articles and stuff like that. So if you have these people as actors and these people as engineers, you can cluster these and say, well, you know, if you've got an asteroid which is in a particular location in these charts, you can compare them against, I don't know, a Man Whitney U or a Kruskal Wallace test, for example, and see whether the distributions of people who have these asteroids next to, I don't know, the sun or the moon or whatever in hot aspects, right, particular places, are distributed differently from the number of people who say were actors or teachers or something. Because if you have these people with important asteroids in a location and these people who don't have those asteroids in a location, and those same people are mostly actors uh, with a heavier frequency versus this other group who are mostly not actors, then boom, you meet the tests of science, statistical significance, and all that other stuff. Today, when I was doing my asteroid interpretations, uh, I discovered two particularly interesting bodies. And so if I come over here to my other screen, um, you can see two of the asteroids which I have pulled and I've done some, some uh, kind of article crawling on different folks, 45,000 people, um, to see where the asteroids Ranevskaya and Red Wine were located. Now I have tons and tons and tons, but these two stood out because I think they help us solve a couple of problems. Obviously, we know that you know, the world is full of, full of um, uh, I don't want to say chaos, but <laughs> there's a lot of tension going around in the world. And we often ask, how can I help or how can I understand what's going on? And so I think these two asteroids will give you a lot of uh, kind of backstory as far as what astrology is going to tell you about these things. We don't do predictions because basically if you've got millions of objects in the sky, it's kind of like having millions of cells in your body just because these five cells want to do something doesn't mean that your whole body's going to do it. You're going to actually need these asteroids and these cells or whatever to work in concert along a path in order to get you to um, end up displaying a particular feature or behavior. So what we typically say is that, much like studying cells, we can study asteroids and say, well, this one is located in this area of the body. Um, I don't know, maybe the brain. Maybe it's a pyramidal cell or something like that. And with some probability, it's going to be employed in, you know, X, Y, Z particular functions. Run of sky was interesting because if you look at this, so first of all, I, I've run these tests and they're actually still running in the background. Um, and it found based on the articles that it crawled, that the instance of the word furniture came up a lot. And we're talking... Uh, maybe about 10%. So basically, I found that out of 45,000 people, maybe 4,000 of them will have the kinds of criteria that I'm looking for. Maybe Ranevskaya was conjunct the moon or Mars or Pluto or some other of the, I think, like eight bodies that I'm using, um, which actually denote public qualities. Not all bodies give you public qualities. So for example, Venus is not you don't look for conjuncts to Venus because Venus is a feedback loop. It's partly you, it's partly them. So uh, we don't compare to that. But anyway, I don't want to get into too much of the details of the research because frankly, it, it would take an hour. Um, what I would tell you is that sampled against things like the North Node or the Midheaven or, or the, the Moon, Ranevskaya uh, appeared in conjunct or trine or sextile major aspect in certain charts. And the word furniture came up more 27 out of 106 times for something like a 10% um, subsample, right? So you expect by chi-squared that you'd get, I don't know, maybe 10 mentions of furniture out of 106, but it wasn't that. 
it was 27 instances of the word furniture. Um, and so the hot aspect percentage, that's what I call the, the conjuncts and things, is 25%. Anyways, the Kruskal Wallace test in particular says, look, the chances of getting 27 mentions of the word furniture in an article, um, in a wiki article, when you're only dealing with 10% of the article is really, like, that's not very likely. It's not random. So you could see that the p-value in the Kruskal Wallace test was something like p.0005. That's, that's big time, right? I also ran things like Man Whitney use and logistic regression. Now they vary in their stringency. So uh, when you're trying to see if uh, categorical variables could be dummy coded or clustered or whatever in order to give you a pattern, then you run tests like these. And so, uh, okay, there's nothing significant in Man Whitney U. There are problems with using that particular non-parametric test. But anyway, the point is that these values, if you look at the whole kind of selection of things, um, they're all less than P.05, and some of them much less. Look at these words for run of Skya, though. Run of Skya, it, it, you've got things like furniture here, but then mafia, uh, schizophrenic, consecrate, prejudice, boots, um, screenplay, things like that, idealist. You know, a lot of these words are going to be kind of related because they're coming from the same pool of articles. But it's not the exact same words used in those articles. In general, I said, okay, well, as I interpret this, according to uh, ascending p-value, basically on the logistic regression first, um, this looks like a mafia asteroid. Now, the interesting thing about Ranovskaya is that what is it that, that connects mafias to furniture? Let me tell you what my interpretation of this one is. It says, groups or collections which insist that associates adhere to their customs and biases. Interestingly, with non-people, it's associated with furniture and the character of your furnishings. It's a major asteroid, which means you should include it in your, your list of... Uh, Things like with Juno and Ceres and the sun and the moon, you should include this one, 6821. It's major where you may ostracize or punish things in people that don't adhere. What is one commonality energetically between mafias and furniture? The answer is, if it's not something that I like, it doesn't belong here, I may kick it out, right? When you're dealing with people, you can organize clusters of people and you can have these strict standards for how you decorate your organization. But if you're dealing with houses or objects or something like that, then you'll have those strict standards for the furniture that you keep. And it's gonna depend. Not all charts are the charts of people. So Ranovskaya is an example of something that I study called frequentics. Frequentics means that we look at, um, we look at patterns not on the basis of what the specific object is, but instead we look at it on the basis of interaction. Does this thing provide us with a flood of information? Is this thing a culture? Does it teach us? Is, related to, is it related to our wants or our power? And then we abstractify the things and then we study them according to the similar kinds of behaviors that they elicit. So in, interestingly, Ranovskaya has a tight association with Sagittarius II. Sagittarius II, if you're not familiar with my work, uh, means that you are within the sign of Sagittarius and you're at this 2.5 degree window because I chop it up into 12. Right? Every sign gets chopped up into 12 more. This is just my kind of backstory of my work. But uh, it corresponds to Sagittarius dot Taurus. And what that means is that you take in Sagittarius type information, cultures, cultural standards, and you channel that energy or you channel that expression towards identity. So given the space of possible actors in a culture, we draw in certain ones for our identity. And curiously, in my research, which I won't show here, because again, it'll take too long, um, Sagittarius II, which is 25 degrees to 27.5 degrees Sagittarius, is associated with learn or die. If you want to activate your 25 degrees to 27.5 degrees Sagittarius, then basically you put yourself in a situation where you must either learn it or die. This furniture sitting on the shelf must either learn your decorative standards or sit there on the shelf. This, this upstart who wants to get into your criminal organization must either learn your standards 
or get out, right? That's what Sagittarius 2 is about. From the culture, I draw things that match my, my identity or they're not allowed at all. The thing about asteroids like Run of Sky is that um, not only do they tie together these seemingly unrelated concepts based on how we behave against them, but they also allow us to think of remedies to certain kinds of problems. Okay, now nobody's going to solve problems with schizophrenia or organized crime, but it does tell us what kind of mentality would be involved in a mafia. I don't think I would run a mafia, and yet I have certain standards for my furniture, and I'm telling you, like, you know, I get a little bit vicious with my decoration in my house. So if you were to run a mafia, you might look at your Sagittarius too, or your location for Ron of Skya in order to see how somebody can basically get a group of people or objects or tools to either support their standards or fail, right? Okay, so if we want to understand kind of a group behavior and um, this you know, really kind of ruthless handling of it's in or it's out, it's in or it's out, and here's what I'll do, um, then we would look at an asteroid like Run of Skya. Uh, run of sky here and we would particularly look at the clusters of asteroids next to it so if i want to understand for example uh well if you wanted to understand me let's say i run a criminal organization and you're like what kinds of things could we expect ajani to do um in order to kind of meet these standards well then i would look for run of sky 6821 i'd put it in the box of extra asteroids and uh, then I'd look for any other asteroids next to it. So let's say that, um, well, if you look at the, the chart for today, you can see that right now, 2.15 p.m., uh, Run of Sky is on the Ascendant. Um, and it's here in something that looks like, to me, mm, I can't tell, Scorpio 7 or Scorpio 6, um, because the way it works is Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo... Virgo, Libra, that's the seventh kind of division of Scorpio. So we're taking power and influence at this moment, and we're channeling it into communication, Libra, right? So run of sky for, for this moment on July 12th, um, 2.15 p.m., is associated with the connection between power and communications, and it happens to be the ambient moment of uh, how to approach issues. Anyways, so we we under, want to understand more, then there we go. Okay, let me move on because I didn't want to take forever on this recording and talk about red wine. Because if we're going to look at a problem asteroid, I always like to try to uh, have solutions with them. Red wine is another one that I found earlier. And if you look at the text mine on red wine, you can see that it's associated with, um, uh, let me move over here. You can see that it's associated with manufacturing business impressions, uh, and these other guys here. When I was trying to connect these, oh, by the way, there are tons, tons, tons more words associated with them. Each one has something like 200. But these are the top ones, and they're, they're significant because it's a vocabulary I'm drawing from, by the way, of about 24,000 words. Um, and of those, you know, you might get, I'd say 200, but it's, more, nah, it's maybe like 50 to 100 on average. That come up as significant, but I only keep the ones that are distinct from a lot of the others. So these are the top performers. Um, looking at that, I ask, what do, what do these things all broadly do to, to that unites them? And my interpretation was a setup intended to ease pain or at least dull it, right? The C, morphine, bedridden, revitalize, right? Anything which fosters recuperation or grants a tool for easing pain. The chart holder can create remedies for others using this cluster. Um, as an astro hacker, I know, for example, that because the asteroid Red Wine is currently conjunct the North Node, recording at this particular moment, 2.15 p.m., uh, give or take some minutes, means that I can provide you with a recording which is born right now at this moment. So the birth chart for this recording is essentially the chart you're looking at. Um, but I can provide you with a, a video on these asteroids and know that the destiny of this particular video 
will partly be to help us create uh, remedies or at least dull pain. Um, so red wine, as you can see, at this moment is not only conjunct the North Node, but it also seems to be conjunct Uranus. I totally didn't plan that. I was just kind of inspired here. But the idea is that mass social communication, um, destiny, and a um, certain level of creating things that dull pain or help us heal um, is kind of a feature of, of, of what you see here. Um, the asteroid number for red wine is 38070. So if you want to include it in your chart and you want to know how you can create remedies, uh, this is what I was talking about earlier, right? Um, world's got a lot of tension in it. How do I help? Well, consider red wine to be one of, I don't know, hundreds of asteroids probably, um, most of them unknown and underinterpreted, at least statistically at least, uh, but, but one of hundreds of asteroids that you can look at to see where in my chart can I apply an energy that helps dull pain. I don't just have to sit back and, you know, you know watch the world go crazy, right? I can actually do things. What are those things? Do I look at Mars? Do I look at Moon? Do I look at the Sun? Mm, I don't know. I think you'd probably look at an asteroid which is more specific, at least in text mine collections, to that particular remedy. Right now, if this were your chart, your birth chart, um, then you would see that red wine is located in Taurus 5. Taurus 5 means that we have over here, um, let's see, yeah, get my mouse down. Remember, we, we go counterclockwise. The, the astral chart goes this way. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, you know, yada, yada, yada. And inside each sign, you count sub-signs backwards. So in, even though we're going counterclockwise here on the outside, when you're inside of, say, Taurus, you go clockwise. Taurus.Aries, Taurus.Taurus, Taurus.Gemini, Taurus.Cancer, Taurus.Leo is Taurus 5, right? And uh, you, can, you can look at my books, uh, Laurentia and, uh, really Laurentia and Alma Mater and all 144 aspects is where the hardcore research stuff starts in my, my astral books. But they will tell you why the wheel does this. Um, anyways, Taurus 5 means looking at identity. If we're addressing identity and we're flowing that energy into projected character from Taurus to Leo, then we can basically follow our destiny here, for this chart at least, and help generate things for masked audiences that dull pain. Um, look for 38070 red wine in your chart and look for 6821 run of sky in your chart to kind of investigate things like this. I've said in a couple of recordings that this work is ongoing. It's, it's a gigantic, colossal Excel table with a bunch of numbers right now. So it's going to be a couple of years before I start putting a lot of this stuff out there. Right now I have like 1,200, it's close to 2,000. I think it's, I don't know. I don't know how many I've done, but um, they're not, they're just not in a format that they can come out. But these two are helpful. I feel like, uh, you know, if you want to start talking about ways that we can contribute things to other people's lives that actually build up uh, solutions, or if we just need to understand organized crime or something like that, then we can look at uh, bodies like this. I hope you find this useful and uh, good luck applying it in your life and to uh, help the lives of those around you.